let's jump into each of these a little more. And I wanna start with how we learn. Indulge me for a second, okay? Now there are all sorts of learning theories out there, situated cognition, constructivism, etc. What it all boils down to is connecting the dots. In the cognitive psychology literature, they'll call those cues. So what does that mean, right? So let's say that these dots are little nuggets of information, cues, if you wanna be scientific about it. And you have a thought process. All right, there's your thought process. When you connect these cues and think about these little nuggets, that actually strengthens those cues and those connections. So then let's say you think about some similar topic but in a different way. Maybe there's a topic in which they're initially asking you um, what the diagnostic approach is, and then on the same topic, another question is asking you how to best treat it. So you have similar dots you're approaching, but in a different route. There's a different thought process you're going through. So every time you go through that, the dots get bigger. Now these are things you already know, what about something you don't know? So you're watching EM Coach, one of our new lectures, or you've been reading out of the updated textbook that we are launching. You read something new you didn't know. How do you integrate that with everything else you already know? Well, it's integrating it in as many different forms, to as many different cues as you can to grow that knowledge. So understanding now that it's all about connecting the dots, let's go through some of these specifics and how you can use them to do better on the exam, because this isn't supposed to be an esoteric lecture. My goal is to get you more points. So starting off, spaced repetition. What is this? It's reviewing your concepts repeatedly, but over an increasingly spaced amount of time. So if you look at that spiral there, you start off in A, B, and C, they're pretty tight, not very far apart. So for example, you may take a practice test and for each of these questions, you're gonna take them, let's just pretend it was a test of three different topics, right, A, B, C. You're going to then look over that test, see it cycles back to A, B, C, the next day. And then you're gonna come back to that test a week later to these flagged questions, these topics that you wanted to hit, A, B, and C. And then a month later, you go back over those. And you don't have to do the whole test, right? You can maybe just pick certain questions. Maybe it's not, practice questions, maybe it is um, bookmarked textbook sections, particular topics that you need to hit again. The idea, and this really comes from flashcards, by the way, this is the best evidence is in cognitive psychology in the flashcards, but you can do this with anything. And so the idea is to look at it, space it out, look at it again, look later, and then later, and then later. Spaced repetition. What this does is really solidifies with the least number of times going over the material, long-term information. You cannot cram for the boards. You just can't. And here's just a little of the evidence. <laughs> I hope I sold you on it. So blended learning, it's, it's, it's a fantastic hidden gem that a lot of people don't talk about. It's not in the popular uh, conversation like space repetition you've probably heard people talking about. Blended learning is one of those really underrated, fantastic learning techniques that has excellent evidence as well. The idea of blended learning goes back to those cues. So it's not just doing one approach, it's looking at some information by different approaches. Here is a little of the evidence and a little more. There's a lot, go with it. It actually really does improve your outcomes. And this has been shown on testing outcomes as well, not just, I think I learned a little better. So what does this mean? Well, you could do prior cases. Let's say that you see a patient with a particular diagnosis, stash that away in your brain. Maybe after that you do some questions. Read a little bit. I know, you know a lot of times we have particular preferences, Go outside those preferences a little bit. Stretch yourself, get a different medium to approach that learning. You can do some small group study. You can do some games. You can make up a Jeopardy thing. You can talk, if you're in a residency program or a clerkship, talk to your uh, classmates about making a Jeopardy. Make it, everybody's trying to study for this, make it fun for each other. That's still a way that you can address that information. Lectures and podcasts, flashcards, high yield summaries. You can make big outlines for yourself. Whatever it is for you, make it a different approach to that same material. All right, so item retrieval. It's essentially doing questions. There's very good evidence for this as well. And the idea is that active recall is exactly doing what I showed you with those cues, right? If you're trying to get to point D over here on one side and you're starting at point A, you have to make that connection and that's what strengthens all those cues. This has excellent evidence actually in uh, journal Science. Very, very good study. It, was, it basically is the thing everyone references that item retrieval or doing questions helps. The thing about this though is it's not just the fact that you're taking those questions that is an important part of it, doing that item retrieval process, but when you get a question incorrect, understand that your item retrieval process was wrong. 
So I'm going to say that again because it's important to, to understand it's not just doing a whole bunch of questions. When you get one wrong, it means that your thought process was either wrong clinically or wrong in terms of how those test makers were creating the question. And the little secret here is test makers, we all go through, if you're doing it properly, we'll talk about that in a second, go through the same process for making a question. So you're trying to get yourself into their shoes. And so if you've got a question incorrect, think about what in that thought process went awry. One other thing that I want to add for the unretrieval is making the most of reading the stems. So some people approach questions with read the stem, take the question, see the correct answer, maybe read the explanation for the correct part and then move on. And just like, oh, I did 500 questions, I did 1,000 questions. Consider the fact that you just spent uh, an important amount of time reading through those stems. You want to apply your time less to going through those stems that don't necessarily teach you a whole lot and more on the explanations, maybe explanations for the incorrect uh, options, right? Now, to be sure, these stems often create a clinical picture and you can build that out. There's only so much you're gonna gather from that after you read the clinical presentation of pulmonary embolism over and over and over. There's something else they're testing you on that. Move past the stem. So when you do a question, read that stem, read all the explanation available to you. That's why our explanations are longer than anybody else's. We're trying to get you the most effective learning possible. Quit wasting time reading the stems and getting one single little nugget. We want you to read the stems and get five nuggets. So, I've already talked about how we use all this. Now you can look at this and say, oh, he's talking about all these things because that's just on the site. Well, the reality is that stuff is on the site because this is what the evidence is. So when we built this, we built it founded in the educational evidence that's out there and these educational theories that I mentioned to you. So that's why we have three different components. We're not just a QBank. We're not just a lecture series. It's all three. Sounds kind of like blended learning, right? Ergo, the questions, the review book, and the lectures. You can also use the artificial intelligence, which has spaced repetition built in. We talked about that just a moment ago. So we're using spaced repetition. We're using blended learning. Hit that coach button. Let the AI do all that work for you. Now, it's going to hurt. I'm going to, I, I apologize for that, kind of. The idea is that the coach is focusing on the areas that you're weakest in. So you're going to see your score drop initially when you use the coach feature on EM Coach, the AI there. The reason is you're not balancing your score in this process with the questions you're already good at. There's some spaced repetition in there, so you'll get a few of those, but expect those scores to be lower. And then go back once in a while, give yourself a little pep talk and do the broad spectrum of questions. Do one with all topics and you'll see that your score rises. We wanna focus on the things you don't know. It doesn't help you to study the things you already do. So let the coach figure that out for you. You will be surprised how much your scores will go up.